Hello fellow RPG makers and welcome to another video. In the previous videos we have done some drawing but any drawing we have done we have done through glittering on a canvas which is not a bad thing but it is not a good thing in particular either because canvas is limited by its dimensions, width and height and you cannot draw outside a canvas's boundaries. So if you want to for example make a sprite that you can freely move around the screen you really can't unless you do it differently and we will take a look at how to make a sprite that you can move around the screen and I will also talk more in detail about the correct placement of the sprite in terms of layering, how it works in MV etc. So let's take a look at the game code. If we take a look inside RPG Core JS, search for sprite, oops, we can see this beautiful class which is a prototype of pixie.sprite. Now pixie, if you don't know, is the 2D rendering engine that is powering up RPG Maker MV rendering. And by default, as you can see, this sprite uses bitmap. This is something MV has done. It's not default for pixie. Pixie just uses, generates a texture that it, that it renders while MV needs a bitmap from which it will generate the texture and it will render the texture afterwards. However, even though this is not very efficient, we will still stick to this because apart from breaking a ton of things while redoing the engine, we also need to solve some pitfalls if we want to work with Pixie itself. So. Since I won't be solving this pitfall since it's a bit more complicated, or not just a bit, it is rather a lot more complicated, I will just use these default sprites. So in order to create a bitmap for the sprite, we will look at RPG managers and we can see various functions for loading various bitmaps inside image manager. So for this example, I will use load phase but you can use really anything and if you want to load a an, an image from a for example custom folder or some other folders you can use load bitmap so let's open the game but before i do any graphics rendering there is one important thing i need to talk about more importantly it's the two parameters inside these functions file name and hue well file name not really but hue is a really important parameter because uh, if we take a look at the database it will shift the color scheme of the image we are trying to render and that is very important depending on uh, which mode we are rendering we can see that if we press F2 in the game the FPS meta jumps and underneath is the current graphics mode it is either canvas or webgl you can see that if uh, not see change it if you open the community basic plugin you can see the rendering mode it is either set to auto by default or you can set it to webgl or canvas manually now the, it is best to use either auto or canvas because if you set it to webgl any game uh, not the game any device that has graphics card that cannot handle WebGL rendering will automatically crash. So it is best to leave it at auto because auto will first try WebGL and then re re revert to canvas if it cannot do WebGL. Or if you want to render canvas you can set it to canvas. The difference between canvas and WebGL is canvas is rendered by CPU and WebGL is rendered by the GPU. Which means canvas since G CPU is not optimized for rendering graphics is done pixel by pixel on the screen while webgl since the graphics card is optimized for rendering graphics it is made to render every pixel simultaneously that is also an important factor with the hue because if you're rendering pixel by pixel any extra parameters you have to count in will slow the game down and if you decide to uh, step up I don't know 1000 sprites all with custom hue it can really slow the game down on the other hand if you're rendering webgl hue is 
in the in the equation for every pixel so hue doesn't really slow the game down since uh, it kind of expects the hue to be there so with webgl rendering you can go crazy on hue on the canvas i would not advise to do it so let's render some sprites large spur i already have it pre-filled because i have recorded and failed a couple of times so this is how we create a bitmap, new sprite, and of course image manager dot load face, the file name and the hue. I'll use zero for simplicity. Scene manager dot underscore scene dot add child. Spur is a basic way to add sprite on the screen, but it is not recommended. I will talk about it later. For now, I will mention that since spur uh, or sprite is a pixie sprite dot prototype, it has some important features of pixie sprite you can use but of course not all of them because it is centered around bitmap and not around the texture so you can for example move it because that moves the bitmap to uh, spur dot x equals 500 spur dot y equals 300 you can even rotate it spur dot rotation equals math.py it is important to know that the rotation is in radians and not in degrees so it you have to do it from one from zero to at max 2 pi so let's move it back or before we move it back there is one important thing to note if you don't want it to rotate around the top left corner but for example at the around the middle you really can't because it is centered around the bitmap and not around the texture so if you try to set the pivot point to the middle 0 0.5 0 0.5 nothing happens i can even show that the pivot dot x is 0 0.5 nothing happens though if I reset the rotation back to zero, it will move back. This, of course, is not present in a Pixie Sprite. In Pixie Sprite, it works as it should, but I won't talk about it here. If you want to see some of my Pixie tutorials, you can take a look. They are quite older, and maybe in some future I will rework them because I wasn't really content with the quality of them even back then but I won't talk about it now. What I will talk about, however, is this scene manager dot underscore scene dot add child, because this is not the most efficient way to add sprites, because as you probably know, or even if you don't know, but if we take a look inside the code, we can see that the scene base is a prototype of stage which is a prototype of pixie.container and pixie.container is a renderable object which pretty much is used in a pixie as a layering system or as a basic layering system if i take a look inside the scene manager dot underscore scene we can see that it has several children three of them sprite set map where the graphics are, are window map name which of course doesn't work <laughs> window layer which is the layer of the windows and now above the window layer are the sprites so if i for example now show a message game message dot add you can see that the image is above the window which is not a good thing so i'll reset the game and let's take a look, look at how you should format this layering now it is not just the current scene 
or the containers that can have children it can be pretty much any renderable object apart from graphics in fact even if i show new pc.sprite i can see that even the sprite can have children which allows for some cool, tri cool tricks but about that later if i take a look back at the scene managers dot scene child uh, children there are three of them and i don't want always to add the child chat at the very back for this reason we have the add child add function add child add of course if we see the definition it doesn't accept any index that is below or uh, below zero or above the children's length because that is out of bounds and as such it will crash but if we for example say the index is 2 then this is 0 1 so the, the spread will be here and everything apart from here to the right will be pushed to the right so if I add our sprite sprite image manager dot load face evil add child add spur to if even if I move it down spur dot y equals 500 and add some gibberish I can see that the message is below uh, is above the image now of course the image itself can have children so let's move it back and let's add some ch child to the image spur uh, var spur equals new sprite image manager dot load face actor one zero uh, not scene manager dot underscore scene but spur dot add child was per of course this is not how we want them to look like so let's move this per a bit down now it is important to note that the x and y coordinates are are not absolute they are not uh, relative to the screen, they are relative to the current parent. So that means that if I move the spur, the spur is going to move as well. Now of course spurs x is 0, but it's still here, and if I make it a hundred it will move a hundred pixels to the right because 500 of the parent plus 100 of it itself is equal to 600 that is a little trick that you can use if you don't want to or if you want to tie two sprites together you can add one child to the other of course in terms of layering the children of a sprite or of anything are above the parent so as you can see spur dot y equals zero will cover the parent however if i add any children like above the parent like the window layer it is above the sprite it will be above the sprite's children too so the z order is the lowest child and its children this child and its children and uh, our sprite and its children and window layer and its children and it will pile up like this it is pretty much similar if you have experience with css so the only thing left to show would be to limit the sprite uh, oh one more thing you cannot have one sprite as a child of two 
containers. If you add the sprite to a different container, let's say the spur to uh, spur, spur those children is suddenly empty. Uh, children is suddenly empty because we have added the super uh, from this to the container you cannot have one sprite as children uh, as a child of two elements so let's remove the spur scene manager underscore scene dot remove child spur and the, the only thing left to show is how to limit the frame of the image so that it's not this huge image. Scene manager, uh, not scene manager, spur dot texture dot frame equals new rectangle. Now it is important that it's either a rectangle or a pixie rectangle. I don't think even a regular object would, would work. Zero, zero for XY, 192, 192. Now it won't be a perfect one phase, but I don't really care. The point is to demonstrate. Of course, I can even customize the X and Y. So let's say 100 and 50. It looks weird, but it works as you can see. So that will be it for this video and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and I will see you at the next video. Bye bye!